factoring involves several different things several different methods I should say. Um, the first method, and this is the most common method, or the first thing that you should look for, is your GCF. Okay, with the GCF you are looking for the greatest common factor, aka a number or a variable that is divisible in each term. For example, if I were to have, say, 12x cubed minus 10x squared plus 4. Looking at this, all of those components, aka each term, each term is divisible by 2. If they're all divisible by 2, then that means that's my greatest common factor. I can factor a 2 out from every one of these terms. Now, looking at this, that 2 on the outside, this is my GCF. And if I were to do distribution, I would get back to the original. So remember, factoring is like the reverse of distribution. Okay, If you're not sure if you factored correctly, do the distribution and see if you get back to the original. Sometimes, this, in this case, this was uh, just a number GCF. Sometimes you will have a variable with your number in terms of your GCF. Um, let's say for instance that I have 20x to the fourth y squared plus 5x to the third y to the fourth. Okay, so if I'm looking at this binomial here, 20 and 5, what do they have in common? 20 and 5 have in common a 5. I can factor out a 5 on each one of these. Now I need to look at the x's. So how many x's do they have in common? And this can be a little bit tricky, so I'm going to break this down a little bit. x to the 4th, remember, is 4 x's being multiplied together x to the third is 3x is being multiplied together. So if I look at it this way, looking at my green x's there, how many x's do they have in common? Well, they have 3x's in common. So I'm going to factor out x to the third. So now those are gone. Just to kind of help you out. Now let's look at the y's. I've got 2 there. In this term, I've got 4. So looking at this, how many y's do they have in common? Well, I can see that they have two y's in common. So what's left over? 5 times 4 gives me that 20. Now the reason why I left these x's and y's here and crossed them out is because I can see now how many x's I have left. I have x to the first left. And I don't have any y's left in that term. So now I'm going to move on to the second term. 5 times 1 will give me that 5. I don't have any x's left. I crossed all those out. On the y's, I have two y's left. So this goes to y squared. Now, if I look at my exponent rules, 3 plus 1 gives me that 4. And I could do the same thing with all of my y's. Okay, so that's factoring by your GCF. And then we also have our factoring by AC method. And this is with um, quadratics, but it's not always in terms of quadratics. And let me explain. So, for instance, let's say that I had 2 x cubed plus 11x squared plus 5x. So if I look at this, I know right now that I can, the first thing that you want to do or try is to factor out the GCF. And looking at this, no, they do not have a coefficient number that they have in common. However, they do have an x variable in common. So I've got x and then 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. So now I'm going to use my GCF method, or GCF method, AC method. But, 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 but. 
and we've done this before, in which A is the 2 and C is the 5. So I'm looking for factors of 10. So in this case, we're going to list them out vertically. I've got 1 and 10 and 2 and 5, and we're trying to find the BX. So that's my breakdown. This X is going to hang out the whole time. Um, you can't just cancel it out. I'm just going to tell you that now. So I've got 2X squared plus 1X plus 10X plus 5. Again, that X has to hang out the whole time. Now I'm going to, on the second part, group factor. Group factor GCF. So I'm going to look at the first two terms. Again, this X has to hang out the whole time. It just keeps floating down. You can't get rid of it. All right. So looking at the 2X squared plus 1X, this is just factoring out the GCF, which we just talked about. So I've got an X on the outside. Well, X times 2 gives me 2X, but I need an X squared, so there's got to be an X there. And then plus 1. So now I'm going to group factor the second portion. They have a 5 in common, so I'm factoring out the GCF, and then I'm left with 2X plus 1. Remember, if you do not get the same parentheses, you did something wrong. So step four, rewrite as parentheses says. So the X still has to hang out on the outside. My first parenthesis is going to be that 2X plus 1. The second parenthesis, remember, is the outside portion. And that's going to be an x plus 5. So these are my factors. If I wanted to find the roots, what would you do to find the roots? That would be set them equal to 0. So find roots slash zeros if necessary. So just as a double check here, so be set to equal to 0. So we've got x equals 0, 2x plus 1 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. This is why you can't get rid of that x on the outside. There are three roots to this. There are three zeros, and that's why that x has to stay there that whole time. So I've got one of my answers as a 0 or a root. Um, over here, I've got x equals negative 1 half. And on the far right, I've got x equals negative 5. Okay, sometimes it won't be just an x on the outside. Sometimes you can factor out, say, like a 3x squared or something of that nature. So you still need that to hang out the whole time. So this is factoring GCF and then factoring by AC just as a refresher.